Hey guys, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. This video is the entire shebang, everything, ultimate video on how I got accepted into Oxford. And obviously I will be going to Oxford in October. I'm very excited. I'm gonna split it up into different sections. Um, they are all very important, so please listen up. And also, I wanted to say, it does not guarantee you will get a spot. It really is dependent on, uh, you know, what happens to you. It depends on your course. depends on the, you know, admissions officers. I guess um, these are things that helped me get into Oxford. Uh, and you can apply them for, hopefully, all degrees, I guess. Please make sure that you do research your course requirements, which I'll get into that in more detail before, you know, you do anything, I guess. So like, you know, make sure that you know whether your course has an entrance exam, grade requirements and stuff like that. Just so you know, you're like, you're aware of what you're called. Do the research that you need to do. Please like, comment and subscribe. Follow me on my social media. The thing I essentially did for my personal statement is in this video. Um, so I will link that in the description box and I do really recommend you do watch that. Your grades, in my opinion, are one of the most important parts of your application, if not the most important part. GCSEs, I'm presuming you would have had your GCSEs by now, so you can't really do anything about them. However, if you're like in year 12 going into year 13, and I'm talking now, please make sure that your predicted A-level grades um, that are going go to get sent on your UCAS reference are the best grades that you can get. There are a lot of friends who couldn't apply to courses they wanted to apply to because their predicted grades were too low. You need to make sure that you pattern those predicted grades. So say this, the better your grades, the more options you have. I'm not saying you need to have predicted grades of all A stars if that's out of your reach. What I'm saying is make sure that your grades, when you've picked out the degree and course you want to do, match the typical offer. So this is a degree in PPE and their typical offer is AAA or minimum that your grades meet their typical offer you, you also need to understand the fact that there is a lot of competition and there are a lot of students who are applying with all a stars i'm not saying that all a stars guarantees your place i'm just saying make sure your application is as good as possible in all aspects so please make sure that you pattern those predicted grades so you have a bigger better option of degrees you can apply for people who i knew for example who couldn't do degrees they wanted to do and got rejected from degrees because they didn't have certain a levels who applied for pure economics in lsc and ucl and got rejected from both of them because he didn't do further maths he actually started off with further maths and dropped it so what i'm going to say is um before if you are in that situation please Try not to drop until you're 100% certain. A lot of people are very hasty with dropping subjects at the start and then they realise that they can't do a certain degree without it. Do not drop a subject until you are sure you want to drop it. That's what I wanted to say. With extracurriculars, Oxford and Cambridge do not care that you're a well-rounded person. Medicine, you do need to be doing volunteering work experience, blah, 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 blah. And Oxbridge wants academics. They want people who have researched their subject academically. So on your personal statement, they want to see academic interest in the subject. And most likely any extracurriculars you do will end up on a reference as well. Uh, your teacher will write a reference and you can ask your teacher to put your extracurriculars in. On top of that, you probably may be applying to scholarships and things like that. So you want to see a well-rounded character when you apply for scholarships. So do not think that they are useless. However, I want to say this. I did zero work experience. Uh, I didn't finish my Duke of Edinburgh. I didn't want to do it. Majority, uh, pretty much everything I did was academic. This really does depend on your subject, but I will say if you are applying to Oxbridge, a majority of the stuff you want to do is academic. However, if you do things like Duke of Edinburgh, NCS, also you will be applying to other universities, so it's nice to put on there. If you're really struggling or where to start, I think the most, I say this to everyone who asks me, is to go into Google and write university reading list for blah blah blah. And then you can even stick Oxbridge if you want to stick at the end. There's a lot of, um, Cambridge has a, a, a a reading list i'm pretty sure the oxford chemistry website has a reading list lsc has a reading list a lot of university websites do have reading lists for you to go and do some reading or research on a subject if you're also stuck it's called a short introduction you can have a look at that so i read a book called a short introduction to organic chemistry and that was really helpful youtube videos ted talks um podcasts things you can have a research and look about literally just stick things into google and just have a look and when i say this just let one thing lead to another and just start researching however every time you look at something you learn of something you watch a video you watch a documentary you listen to a podcast all of that make sure that you reflect upon that you find interesting what did you learn 
why did that fascinate you what skills could you have gained out of that would you like to apply that knowledge in the future things like that please and when you write about it in your personal statement you've got something to talk about and you've got reflections and you know things to write about on your personal statement and you can kind of you can say i did xyz but you're going to be writing a paragraph about that xyz so it makes it easier for you to write it if you have stuff to talk about and experiences to draw on personal statement research book now remember so essentially this was a lecture i watched on the art of mathematical proof so a lot of things about nmr all that here it just thought about fragrances so there's a lot of research here and i've got stuff i can talk about so when i write my personal statement i've got things i can talk about i did a bunch of research on vitamin b12 which i read from a book and i did a bit of research upon that reading and um, i made a bunch of notes about it so then i can look at those facts and reflect on what i found interesting reflections upon each book i read so work experience project uh, an internship any volunteering reflect on it so then if you ever want to write about it you've got something to talk about so make sure that you know there are skills that are applicable to your degree that could be useful um that you could write about if you want so for example you learned teamwork you learned management skills these are useful in laboratories you get what i mean university access programs so like unique manchester access program there's a durham access program i did cambridge he plus i did oxnet loads of things are out there i haven't done all of them uh, there's like opportunity at oxford so please make sure that you know you do your research if you've done any of these programs and you've watched like online lectures you've done a summer school you've done all of that make sure you have a diary you've reflected on all of it i'm not joking these things are like really good to put on your personal statement um, especially if they're also related to your subject MOOCs uh, if you if you're considering doing an EPQ or you've done one I didn't do an EPQ so I don't feel like you really need one but if you feel like you're you haven't done much for your personal statement and you want to consider doing it have a have a look at a competition you took part in so I did bridge chemistry challenge I didn't do that you could do like an Olympiad definitely nice to have something like that there and um, there's I think a chemistry one and a maths one there might be more I'm not sure also the UKMT which I did not on my personal statement because i absolutely did terrible in it make sure that when you reflect on something you also talk about like you know the application in the real world so a lot of the time when i talked about like you know um chemistry i talked about environmental concerns um scaling up in industry wasting energy resources um i definitely thought that was like something you you see the importance of what you're researching um, I also designed a booklet guide thing that helps you make a personal statement with all the tips, all the like bits here, um, all guidance on like, research and stuff like that. And uh, that will be in my description box for you guys to purchase. Um, this is the cover. Uh, I kind of worked on this. I thought it'd be something nice that could help people write a personal statement and suggestions on where to start and what to do. The link in my description box, it will be a digital um, booklet and it will be on my Etsy in the description box so have a look and check that out i would really appreciate that make sure your personal statement does have like an 80 20 structure and that um most of it is academic research obviously if you're doing medicine and stuff like that you do want to talk about you know the work experience aspect and the care side of things as well i'm not an expert on medicine so i can't really talk that much on it but you do obviously want to have that and then obviously when you when you do anything make sure that it has a relate it relates to your subject and the skills so even if you do apply for an academic degree work experience that may be related to that um definitely about skills that you've gained from that work experience and how that could be applied in your degree addison you know you may have done work experience in a care home and that shows that you know you care about taking care of others blah 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 you, you see what i'm saying so make sure that that aspect if you're applying to medicine especially is there the way you structure your personal statement is entirely dependent on you subject uh, the the way you present the personal statement obviously is more important in more subjects than others how well written it is how well spoken you are i also like to say that you know don't overdo it with words that you don't understand i just think it sounds really fake it really sounds like you're just forcing it at that point make you like, make it sound like you're interested but don't use words that you don't understand this is my personal statement if you guys want to have a look at it as you guys can see here i have this is the way i've chosen to structure it i didn't have like an introductory paragraph but i introduced my passion for chemistry and i focused on organic then i went straight on to say this is clear from i read this book i researched some fragrances i decided to do a research project on that fragrances thing leave your personal statement last minute do try and start it Try and start it early just so then you you can start drafting it. Uh, I, did, I only had like three drafts I think at max and I didn't like redraft it numerous times. I think I just like 
I had the same structure. I rewrote a paragraph and just reworded things. That's literally what I did. But some people redrafted it like 10 times. So it really depends on you. But I would say start it as soon as possible. So then you've got time to, you know, get feedback and improve. So this is your personal statement. Please take other people's advice with a pinch of salt. My teachers did tell me to take some certain things out, which I could have in hindsight, but I didn't want to because I thought that this is something I wanted to keep and make it unique to myself. I kind of liked the idea of like linking my hobbies with my passion for chemistry like I did for painting. I made it clear that I have a hobby for painting and uh, uh, one of my hobbies is painting. And then I linked that to my interest in chemistry. That was something I personally wanted to do. You do not have to do that. This is your personal statement. I will say that there has to be a huge academic interest shown in that personal statement you do it your way obviously and make it sound realistic another thing i want to say please do not like, upon exiting the room i discovered a passion for organic synthesis don't do that make sure it grammatically makes sense avoid 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 the personal statements um spitting too many facts like sitting down writing a whole personal statement writing a bunch of facts you've read from a book that doesn't tell them that you're passionate about the subject that just tells them you've read a book and you've picked out a bunch of facts what fascinated you what was interesting what did you gain out of that yeah please go and check your course entry requirements because a lot of courses do have entry exams yes mine did not have an entrance uh, entrance exam but a lot of them do and you definitely need to be aware of them in advance so then you prepare for them and as you're watching this video i definitely will say you should start preparing for your entrance exams as soon as possible because they are very difficult uh, i've never done one but i have friends who've done tsas bmats um whatever whatever you need to know what the requirements are for them you need to start practicing papers you need to start building up. you need to do a paper and see what your problem is with these papers what you're getting wrong and you need to start building up and making progress if you need to buy like a revision guide for an entrance exam you need to be watching youtube videos you need to be getting into seminars get in and do it now and start doing it now so then by the time it gets i think november is when you take your entrance exam ready and you don't you have a bit of confidence some people are pretty good with entrance exams and seem to be able to do them like don't need that much revision I know a lot of people who were revising for entrance exams since July and stuff like that. So I would definitely recommend you do start as soon as possible. If there's any clubs in school where they can support you with this kind of stuff, get involved in it and take it seriously. A lot of people have been rejected from their June courses because they don't revise for entrance exams. So do try your best to get the best score you can get uh, and try and make as much progress as you can before you sit your entrance exam. It is so important that you revise for those entrance exams and the best way to revise for them, I'm pretty certain for my friends, is through practice and you know um like acquiring a skill that they want so it could be problem solving critical thinking whatever it is um is like obviously the bmats do have like gcse stuff in there so it's good to revise that content of course uh, and there's certain skills you need to acquire so make sure you know what those skills are and you're educated on that in advance so then when you start revising for your so then when you're when it comes closer to your entrance exam you know you're prepared and you know you have an idea of what is at least you know what to expect in the sense that what type of questions will be asked and you're able to answer those questions so you know you're in a better position of that be in december like early mid-december one thing that really helped me i think was doing mock interviews at school do your best to actually prepare for those mock interviews i get involved in university access programs so i did oxnet and pembroke scholars which i did i got a mock interview for that and i got a whole insight on the experience if you can find something that helps you prepare for interviews i know unique is one of them ask teachers or you know see if there's any support you can get with uh, interviews if not I signed up for something called Zero Gravity, it was for free and it was the support I got from students in Oxford who actually gave me a mock interview and that was really helpful. So I'll link that in the description box if you're interested in checking that out. It's like literally an extra mock interview I got basically and it was for free. So if you don't have any support from school uh, or you feel like you want extra support, go and check out Zero Gravity. This is not sponsored in any way, it actually really helped me. Just talking to yourself. I know I make a lot of these videos so I'm quite used to talking online, uh, but like talking, talking, talking. When they give you a hard problem, it's really important that you talk your ideas out loud, no matter how stupid you think they are. They, it's, it, they don't want someone who thinks in their head they want someone who thinks out loud so when you're given a source you're given a i don't know an image a graph 
or whatever to analyze look at like certain things beyond the curriculum so for me as a chemistry student i did a lot of olympiad problem solving questions there's a lot of problem solving beyond chemistry a level and olympiad is really useful the chem the cambridge chemistry challenge as well the olympiad is really good actually and i'm not gonna lie to you guys one of the questions that was on the olympiad exactly the same type of chemistry was in one of my interviews and I was able to answer the question because I'd gained some of the skills and knowledge from practicing Olympiad questions. I was able to apply it in my college interview. So it's really important to actually, you know, look elsewhere for like non a level questions or application -y questions or just analyzing unseen literature, sources, graphs, all of that kind of stuff. Someone who did chemistry, I watched uh, a lot of the organic chemistry tutor. I learned a lot of his stuff and I actually put some of it on my personal statement as well. Link his YouTube channel in my description box. I recommend learn to apply knowledge with stuff that's not on the A level. So it's really important to have got that. Um and I'm not gonna lie to you, like, it was really useful. It's the critical thinking, practice the analysis, practice the thoughts, practice the debating, practice the arguments, practice the like, you know, analyzing whatever. Like they give you an image and they say like, what does this symbolize or whatever. Practice analyzing it in depth and stuff like that and ask people to help you. Like for example, talk to a teacher and be like, um, I don't know, like practice objects as well. I think I talked about like analyzing those objects and stuff like that. That's actually quite cool. I definitely have a go at that. It definitely gives you like talking skills. For your interview, please make sure you revise your personal statement because there is quite a chance that they could ask you about it. I was not personally asked about my personal statement in my Oxford interview. However, I was grilled on it in my Imperial interview. Please on your course, a lot of people who definitely did humanities, I think were asked a lot more about their personal statement than someone like me. It definitely varies from person to person. Definitely want to be on the safe side. So make sure you do revise your personal statement and you can back everything that's on that personal statement when it comes to interview time. That's why I said, Write notes about what you've learnt and reflect on it so then you have those notes later on when you've forgotten those books you've read. Uh, and even if they were going to ask you some abstract questions, um, they will give you information and a bit of guidance as well, so don't worry about that. Basically everything I did, I guess, um, like I said, try and make sure that everything in your application is as good as you can make it. Um, this is your application and make sure you put your all into it. Try your best, I guess, is what I wanna say. Good luck to anybody who is applying to any university. Um, I do wish you guys the best and yeah, um, I really hope that these applications go well for you. Go and check out the personal statement guide in the description box. I hope this video was useful. If it was, please like, comment and subscribe. Follow me on my social media and get ready for other university vlogs that will be coming soon.